On the score now to talk League of Ireland football once again. And our guest this week is uh, former Fan Harps captain uh, Keith Cowan joins us on the programme once again. Keith, uh, a very good afternoon and uh, welcome along to the show once again. Thanks, Sebastian. Thanks for having me on. There's a lot to talk about, uh, League of Ireland wise. Uh, you played in some derbies uh, over the period of your, your spells at, at Fan Harps and you never managed to get the one at the Brandywell. Were you a wee bit jealous on Monday night, were you? <laughs> Look, I was just I was just jumping out of my skin when uh, when Foley found the back of the net. It's great to see it's great to see a win against Derry, no matter which club it is, but uh, I think it makes it more special when, when it's a when it's a harsh victory. As you mentioned there, we got close on a couple of occasions in the Brandywell. We spoiled the party uh, there one night when they were going to win the league. Uh, way back when I think a two a, a two all draw we got and uh that was sweet enough going ahead twice in that game but you know the, the lads will be will be buzzing it'll give them a serious lift going into the match uh on Saturday away to Bows. Well listen it was a much needed victory because the four games prior to that they managed just to pick up a point after having such a, a fantastic run. So the timing of the three points, Keith, was crucial. Oh yeah, because it's sort of you know it's sort of Made that gap now again between Derry. Like Derry got you know the two ones there after Rory Higgins coming in. You know that resurgence of a new manager uh, coming in and the the young players that there reacted to that. There you know getting a win away to Sligo and a win away at Bowes. So had they of beat Harps uh, there on Monday night, it could have you know it would have it would have brought them right up and behind them, but it would have brought the gap back into a point. But uh, no, it's a really really important victory for Harps. Um, the way we look at Harps now, we're kind of expecting them to do something every week where that expectancy, you know, is there. You know, not getting anything against Shamrock Rovers or or Patsy haven't played well in both games. You know, that's kind of where the expectancy level is now. So it was great to get back to winning ways. You know, as as we mentioned, the goal right at the death foot, that man again, Adam Foley, on a great run of form. Um, and the three points is massive, as always. Yeah, and in that period as well, um, Harps failed to find the net on, on, on several games leading into that. So, so to, And the Northwest Derby, a, a game of such magnitude, uh, to get back onto the scoring sheet again was also also crucial. So it was for all his side. Oh, it's massive. You know, obviously, like, and again, it was it was Foley and O'Sullivan, the two lads that are sort of like, Foley, obviously, leading the leading the league in goal with five goals um, from his first nine games, which is a great return. I'm not sure anybody really would have expected that. Maybe, maybe only him, but... Uh, and then Cara Sullivan chipping in with two as well. Might be a, a worrying sign that maybe that's where the, the goals are only coming from. Obviously, it's great to see your striker scoring and your front end scoring, but you'd like to see maybe the lads further in the pitch. I know uh, Webster got one that got the winner against uh, got the winner against Waterford, I think it was at Fun Park, uh, which picked up another vital three points for them. So uh, I think they'll have to start looking around the dressing room now to see where they're uh, going to chip in a few more goals from. Yeah, uh, aside from from the goals, there was a lot of excellent performances by Van Harps. I think overall they, they fully deserved the one and uh, and the three points. The likes of Barry McNamee put in a, a huge shift, so he did on on Monday night. Aside from the goal scores, what else impressed you, Keith? Well, I think you know Harps Harps started the game really well. You know they you know they they moved the ball well. They cut Derry open at times, and Derry took the lead pretty much against the run of play for my money anyway. Um, they played some nice football. They didn't really. Uh, Barry had a great chance early on. I think Olabi had a great chance early on. And then, as I said, Derry against the run of play. Akintuni's caught inside. You know, Siddiqui maybe would have liked to have done better. He's kind of gone to ground maybe a bit too early. And he's, uh, to be fairness, Akintuni, he's curled the ball into the far corner of the net, which was, as I said, against the run of play. Some standout performances so far this season. I think a lot of people are talking about Mark Coyle and you know the work that he's doing in the middle of the park. Um, you know, a lot of the sort of the work that goes on notice at times. He's getting around, he's hassling, he's breaking things up. Um, uh, alongside him, uh, young Seymour as well, who's who's come in at his first season. Um, I think maybe just because of Mark's work right in there and the job that he does, and then you have Barry in there and the job that he does. A bit more expected of Seymour, you know, and maybe his, you know, setting things up and maybe, you know, starting attacks and trying to break through the lines. That their type of player is what I think maybe Harps are missing slightly at the moment um, because of the style that they play as well. Sometimes, you know, as I say, they started really well against Derry. They attacked really quickly. Barry, as it was getting into the box, that's where you want them on the edge of the box and, you know, arriving late. 
and there, there was those gaps then maybe that that's how Derry got their goal. So they kind of need to lock down that area of the field in the middle. Um, but you know, I think as they play more together, I think that will that will uh, they'll learn more about each other, and you know that will sort of settle down, and they'll and they'll learn to play that style. Obviously, you know we've talked a lot about Foley. His goals have been excellent. You know, got Harps to where they are. You know, the goals, the style of goals that he scored as well. You know, not just six yard box or tappings or headers and that there. You know, he's had he's had a lot to do in these moments. You know, you, you think about the one back in the Dundalk game where he's you know. The more time he's had, you know, there's obviously a, mo- a lot more things can go wrong. Some sometimes we say about strikers when they have more time to think about something, you know, a lot more things can come into play. But he's taken his goals excellently. You know, he's created a, a nice partnership there with McNamee. You know, find him in good areas and with O'Sullivan as well. You know, another one that's really impressed me with his work rate, with his strength, with his pace. So all over the park. And then you know, you look along the back line, um, Siddiqui, who's done really well. And a lot of games, very commanding in the air, very strong, you know, great presence in there. Webster, you know, captain's role, organising, constantly talking. You know, Mark McGinley's coming for a bit of criticism uh, and and goals for, you know, the past few weeks, maybe making mistakes. But that's just the expectancy level that, again, that I was talking about earlier. Mark Anthony McGinley has pulled off numerous saves for Harp, keeping them in games and set the bar for himself so high that when he does maybe have a lack of, drop off in concentration or whatever that might lead to a goal or might lead to a shot and goal, people are going to criticise him. And that's the unfortunate part of being a goalkeeper. When you make a mistake, it generally leads to a goal. So, um, no, I think as a, as a massive result for them during the week, I know three points in a derby, the way they did it, conference will be set sky high and they'll be looking forward to bows now again yeah. on Saturday. I'll we'll be heading to Dublin, obviously to Daily Mount Park. Interesting when you see the table. The three sides that are above Harps uh, are the the three teams that they've suffered defeat to this season. Uh, mm-hmm. Oaks currently sit what six points off them, uh, seventh in the standings. Um, if you were to look at that and the way the results have gone, uh, you would expect Harps to get something out of this game. Now I know people have been talking about Bows are a top four team, but that mm-hmm. hasn't turned out on the results sheet. So this is a game that you would think that Harps are fully well capable of possibly getting a full set of points in the road, Keith. Oh, very much so, very much so. Actually, I think you know we spoke about it at the, at the start of the season. Uh, this is not the Bose team of old, you know, uh, with the experience and stuff. You know, quite a young squad there. You know, a, f- a few a few lads with experience. Um, contrast and styles that they play. I watched uh, just some of the highlights there against Drogheda. You know, the goal they scored is as good a goal as you'll see um, in the league and in, in, in the league of Ireland, no matter any other league. You know, keeping possession. You know, playing out from the back in tight areas with with men around them. You know, going back and going out the other side. You know, and a great ball, a great ball from the midfield, and you know, tucked away very nicely. Um, I think Harps. You know, they've gone there previous previously, picked up three points there at the end of last season. They beat them at home. They'll know all about them. They'll be well organised. Um, as we say, all he won't let the lads get carried away and you know even having picked up three points against them and you know beat them the last two times that, that they played them he'll still be keeping them grounded the the approach will still be the same be organized you know play to play to harp strengths and they're they'll be thinking three points will be fairly achievable on saturday night yeah and i suppose what's it going to take both of course of the likes of georgie kelly who can stick the ball in the, in the back of the net and we've seen the the, the threat that that he posed, they're a hugely uh, a talented side, but the fact that they're back scoring goals again, it sort of adds to the whole thing, doesn't it, Keith? Oh, de- it definitely does, and you know, like, Dilly Mount's never an easy place to go anytime. you know, I think, as just as I was going to say earlier, that the confidence and the momentum seems to be with Harps at the moment, you know, they're ahead of Bows, and they'll, and they'll want to keep that, they'll, they'll want to keep those, uh, I, think, I think it might be, I'm not sure if it's four or six points between them at the moment, They'll want to keep that there, and you know, yes, they have threats. Georgie Kelly's a huge threat. Loves scoring goals against Van Harps. Has done it over the over the years. You know, still a young man. Still, you know, he's picking up goals here and there, but not as prolific as he would want to be. And like as I say, he loves scoring against Harps, and he'd be looking to grab a few a few more on Saturday. Well, uh, Ollie Horgan will be hoping that he doesn't stick the ball in the net uh, come Saturday evening uh, after the game against Bowes. There's Crucial back-to-back games. We've got two the two Louth sides coming, uh, Dundalk and, and Drogheda. So again, if you had a good result, it certainly will put you in a, a very, not a comfortable position, but in, in good spec as you are heading to the next two games. Definitely. like um, you know, And again, they'll be seeing these games as, you know, that they've 
they've they've played on dock, you know, they've taken points off them already this season. You know, going there and winning is a is a huge result. As I say, it's all about confidence. That'll give them massive confidence. Dundalk, not in a great run of form. You know, interim manager Jim McJelton coming coming downstairs from his director of football role and the management. You know, there's talk of uh, David Healy, the current Linfield manager, coming in there to to the Dundalk hot seat, which would uh, be a huge boost for them with with his experience. So you know everything's just not rosy in the garden there. It's you know it, it's strange when, when you when you look back five six months ago, Dundalk were playing in the Europa League group stages against Arsenal. You had Finn Harps that were you know fighting relegation against uh, against Waterford in the League of Ireland. So the fact that we're now talking about Harps going and you know picking up three points against Dundalk in a very winnable game, you know that just shows you where they've come. So they, they, they'll. So after this first uh, round of games, they've played everyone, they've seen everyone, so they won't fear anyone. You know, there's probably not many, if, if you look at the points, you know, 14 points from nine games, you know, a great return. But if you look at that, those running games, there's not there's not many games there where you would have thought we didn't deserve these points or it was a snatch and grab. Maybe maybe the Waterford game, but, you know, you, you've come from behind, you've dug in, you've shown that they can do that against Waterford. They done it against Derry the other night. So, you know, the, as I say, the guys will have nothing to fear. They'll be they'll be looking for Dundalk to come down and 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 put it up to them, and I'm sure they will. Look, we can't rely on Dundalk and just say you know that they've totally dropped down. But you know they they've they've gone to Longford and struggled to get a point there last weekend. So you know it's uh, it's it's not the Dundalk of old, and you know Ollie will be and Higgsy will be reminded of that. Although to respect them, but look, it's very achievable to be picking up points against these teams. Yeah, that's to come in a number of weeks' time. Uh, Derry City lost, of course, that derby on on Monday night. Uh, they had two victories before that, Keith. Um, the last time we spoke to you, uh, they hadn't picked up a single point. What have you made of them since? Well, obviously, you know, the new manager coming in has given them a lift. You know, uh, Rui Higgins, I thought, was a great appointment. There was a couple of names mentioned. Uh, I know Paddy McLaughlin, the Cliftonville manager, was mentioned. Uh, I think Paul Hegarty was even mentioned. And there was chat that... Um, two weeks ago would have been his last game and he would have been taking the job, but that hasn't seemed to materialise. Uh, Rui's in there, you know, bit of a dairy legend, you know, played there for a number of years, uh, has experience throughout the league, played also for Bowles and Dundalk, you know, played a season up in Korean as well in the Irish League. So huge wealth of experience, still relatively young, only at 36. Um, he's got an experienced man in with him as well and uh, Raf Gattaro, you know, huge experience in the league. They'll know the players. And I think it's maybe... It, He's got the reaction that he's wanted straight away, you know, with a young side. I think from the side that started against Harps last night, you'd uh, Lafferty maybe at 31. The rest, they're talking, you know, you're talking Kieran Harkin, 25, Atkinson, 25. The rest of the last 20, 21, you know, not a lot of experience in the, in the league. So um, you're looking at that there straight away, you know, to try and get that reaction uh, f- from the players. And he's done that straight away, you know, going to, going to Sligo and winning, great result, real battling performance. Um, and then um, I think it was Bose as well, going away to Bose, getting a win later on, you know, showing that real grit and determination that, that you want. You know, this, this was the least thing to be expected from your team. So he'd be happy with that there. You know, and then, you know, just the young guys, you know, really buying into what he's doing so far. Um, maybe the fact that he isn't that much older, you know, just at 36, that he's a bit more relatable maybe as a manager. And, you know, he's, he sees these young players. He knows what they're going through straight away as you know, he was only maybe in their position about ten years ago himself. So, um, you know, I think it's uh, I think it was a great appointment from Derry and him being a Derry man himself. You know, um, like you know, he'll he'll understand what it means to the fans and you know everyone around the club. Yeah, uh, they've got a game against Longford Town, obviously on on Friday night. Uh, that would be a good game to bounce back from a defeat in, in the North West Derby. They currently set just two points above Longford, so a one here for Rory, Rory Higgins' side, but would put them back on track. Is that we expect them to be come the end of the season and then bottom four, bottom five surroundings of the of the Premier Division, Keith? Um, I suppose the way that things have gone, you know. Up until Rui's come in, you would have thought maybe definitely until they've made that change. It's hard to know now, you know, uh, which way they're going to go. They'll be looking to get three points. You know, I think it's I think they're home to Longford this weekend, so you know that'll be a game that they'll be thinking that we have to go and win here. You know, expect especially having gone um, uh, too, too too long for it early on the, the, the opening night of the season and a defeat there, which was a bit unexpected. Not many seen that coming. 
But uh, I, like I, I just think that this is this is somewhere now where they'll be looking. I think to maybe the transfer window in the summer. They'll need to get some players that we talked about, you know, of experience in there to try and make sure that they're creeping up and down, you know, creeping up places all the time. As I said, you know, had, had they won, and you know, uh, you know, the width of a post away on on Monday night against Harps, you know, they had a chance just beforehand. I think it was Jack Malone had a, sh- had a shot, hit the post, and then just after it, at the end hole, you know, had a header that's, that's hit the post as well. So, you know, they're they're, they're there thereabouts. But, you know, these young guys are, you know, as as, as I mentioned, buying into what uh, Rui Hagen wants to do here, and uh, sorry, Rui Higgins what wants to do here, and uh, you know, he'll be expecting another big reaction. You know, a, a, a huge bounce back uh, come the weekend. Yeah. Uh, one other game just in the League of Ireland uh, of note this weekend St. Patrick's Athletic against Shamrock Rovers it's going to be a battle of the uh, of the top two sides in, in the Premier Division and I suppose the way things are panning out already uh, it's fair to say the title probably down between these two with, with, with Rovers edging it at the moment Keith, do you agree on that? Well, they're, they're the early pace setters. You know, you look at the squads that they have accumulated, you know, and we talked about, you know, maybe lack of experience with certain squads. You know, this, they seem both sides, uh, Stevie O'Donnell and Bradley seem to have got, you know, the, the great mix of experience and youth, you know, uh, and, and abundance with both those squads. Like, you know, a lot of the lads that, you know, left on dock um, at, the, at the start of the season or the end of last season have gone to both those clubs. And, you know, with that, you get experience in, in massive games. You get experience on, on how to win leagues. You get game, you get uh, big game experience, how to, how to, how to manage these, these occasions. So, you know, with the early pace setters being those two, I think, you know, Sligo, you know, maybe faltering slightly at the, at, uh, at, at crucial times in, in, in the last few weeks. So uh, I think, you know, we, we would be a bit naive to look any further than... Uh, than uh, Pats and Rovers, of course, of course, for Harps, of course, we might uh, we have to throw them in the mix too. But no, I think it's yeah. I think it's Rovers and Pats so far. At least in Europe for Harps, Keith. <laughs> I think Ollie uh, question was fired early on the last night. Uh, I think with his hold, he's got to kill keys be as far as he's going. Yeah, uh, it doesn't get carried away, so it doesn't. But listen, it's a great time from a Harps supporters' point of view. It's just really a pity that the likes of the Harps fans couldn't get into the Brandywell Monday night to, to share the experience with, with the players because it was the first ever one at the Brandywell, Keith. And God knows when they're going to get the, uh, another one in there, but it's just a pity that the fans can't be there to enjoy what's going on with Harps at the moment. Yeah, you know, they've had to endure a couple of rough nights in there over the years. Um, you know, I remember a few of them myself, so it wasn't too nice. Like, But, uh, yeah, that would have been unreal. You know, like a last-minute winner, you know, down that end as well. That's where all the Harps fans would have been down in that corner. I'm sure Foley would have headed to them instead of, you know, heading in around the back of the dairy goal that a couple of the dairy fans had managed to peek over the wall. Like, so it would have been great for them. You know, that's, uh, you know, these are the games, like the big derbies, you know, once the f- fixture list comes out, you always look towards the dairy game and see when that is. So, you know, that, that would have been un- unbelievable to to share with them. But, you know, hopefully those days are coming back now and like the next time Harps go in there, There'll be expectancy from them, from the fans. So uh, hopefully they will let them down. Sure they won't. If I'm right in saying, could be the last game of the season. Is that right? The way the fixtures, there's three runs of of games, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, so, well, it would be. Yeah, so it would be a great place, uh, you know, to relegate the area if you were going in there. <laughs> uh, the last game of the season, hard to get Europe and there to go down. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, away from the Irish League and uh, or away to the Irish League actually uh, Senior Cup for you guys Glen Thorne against Cliftonville on Saturday evening um, is the Cup now maybe the last chance to solve over a few boys yeah unfortunately you know things didn't go away last night uh, Coleraine with uh, a last minute equaliser you know uh, taking massive points and I suppose any whoever had won that game would have you know moved that bit closer to Linfield uh, they seem to be and the driving seat at the moment, you know, with only with with with, with games running out. So um, yeah, like you know, it was great experience. Obviously, won in the cup last year. You know, spoke with you about it before. It was a fantastic achievement. You know, we're looking to do the same this year. Uh, Cliftonville, who we beat in the in the semi final last year, will have an axe to grind there as well, and they'll be looking at it as their chance of silverware as well. So you know, it'll be a, it'll be a great occasion. Unfortunately, again, no fans. Um, you know, Irish Cup always a huge occasion in any round. Uh, in the Irish League, so uh, yeah, no, we'll be looking to we'll be looking to bring the cup back to the Oval again, and you know we'll see uh, Cliftonville just as another uh, as another game, and you know hopefully we can uh, get the right side of the result on on Saturday evening. 
Okay, we wish you the very best of luck uh, with that game this weekend. Keith, as always, thanks for joining us, and we'll catch Good up again. Good match. Cheers. Thanks, Ashley.